Let's talk about Anchor. If you haven't heard about Anchor, it's the easiest way to make a podcast. Let me explain. It's free. That's right. No more excuses. Get your lazy ass off the couch. Go start a podcast. There's the creation tool that allows you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. Once again, no more excuses. Anchor will distribute your podcast for you so it can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and many more. Could it be easier? Even better, you can make money from your podcast with no minimum listenership. That's right. They're paying us for this ad. Thank you very much, Anchor. Download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started now. This is The Dime, a 10-minute dive into the cannabis and hemp industry through trends, insights, predictions, and tangents. Okay, welcome back, everyone. This is the week of May 14th. I've got, as always, Kellen Finney here with me, and let's dive into the topics. Today, we're talking about the FDA and CBD as a legal additive. The FDA has been very assertive in its directive that CBD is not a legal food additive on the timing of food and beverage product launches by major brand retailers. The agency warning to product makers to stop making claims of curative or treatment efficacy for specific disorders and diseases. These actions have made major traditional retailers far more cautious about carrying edible CBD products. Kellen, do you think the FDA will ever come out and say that CBD is a legal food supplement? And if so, when? I do. Probably 2022 is my guess. This is based on like all of the rumblings within like the very professional societal organizations like AOAC and NIST and like all of these chemical safety standard organizations that are really closely tied to the government have developed cannabis programs such as CASP and other programs that um, were developed maybe a year, maybe two years ago is when they really started pushing forward on it. And they're going to be responsible for generating the safety and understanding like, is it truly safe to consume CBD orally via digestion? What are the byproducts when you do? What's the dangers? What are your maximum doses? All of these things are need to be determined before the FDA can safely say, yeah, it's cool if you eat that or not. Those organizations have started that. It'll be research and I think it'll take another two years probably. So my guess is sometime in 2022. And so what are you thinking, Brian? I think 2022 is probably spot on. I think anytime you're talking science and research on unknowns, it takes a lot of time. And my feeling is that the Israelis will come out and lead this brigade and try and really expedite the scientific research. And hopefully their findings, AOAC and NIST and all these others can partner up or to take their research and use that as a, a stepping ground to try and get this sooner rather than later, because with the interest and the explosion of CBD products absolutely everywhere, I think having some sort of guidance on the products and the regulatory body overseeing the ingredients inside can really be beneficial for all. Say they do come out and make CBD a known substance. Will that encompass other cannabinoids or will they need to do other regulations for the individuals? It's going to have to be handled separately, right? Like every chemical is different. It's going to interact with your body differently. There's going to have to be a completely different set of studies to understand all of those health consequences. Um, So it'll be completely different. Um, Just based on it being a different chemical, there's a whole process it's got to go through and um, a lot of T's that need to be crossed, a lot of I's that need to be dotted that... um, that you can't just like bandwagon a bunch of cannabinoids together and be like, here, approve all these chemicals. Like one of them's cool, right? So, I mean, that's just not what it, how it works. I mean, I'm curious to see what, what if you think that that's something that would occur, Brian. No, I agree with you. I think that they'll have to do them individually. I was more curious though, from an understanding standpoint is there's a ton of cannabinoids and at the end of the day, if we're having this much time and effort to go into research one of these CBD products, I can only imagine what the long-term amount of effort will go into in establishing regulatory bodies to oversee these other cannabinoids that are popping up, whether that's Delta-8, THC, and all these other ones that are commonly coming up, CBC, CBG, CBN. It, it's just going to be a plethora of cannabinoids with endless amounts of research. So I think from a scientific standpoint, we've got a long way to go. Yeah. Prediction time. 
what is your feeling on the future of these cannabinoids in food? Do you think CBC will be it? Do you think it'll be CBG, CBN, CBD? Which one do you think will be the most prevalent in everyday society when it comes to food? CBD. I mean, there's definitely anecdotal evidence right now of CBD's effect on pain relief as well as arthritis and kind of its interaction within that CB2 network within your muscles and those things. And there will be more like hard science that shows the mechanism in which it's achieving those uh, results. But I think the proof's in the pudding, right? You look at epidiolex and you can see that it is obviously a cure for individuals with that specific type of seizure that suffer from that specific type of, of disease and that results in a seizure. And epidiolex and CBD literally cure it with the other ph phytocannabinoids present. Um, and people don't have seizures anymore when they, they're ingesting that. It's clear that CBD is interacting with the mechanisms responsible for muscle control. As far as how, that's still yet to be determined. And I know there's a lot of really smart scientists out there working on it. And so that's my prediction is that CBD will become a mainstay within society based on just the fact that it works, right? It's, it's not snake oil. That's kind of my prediction. I mean, what, where do you see this all going, Brian? So I think CBD is cop out, if we're going to be honest. I think CBD is everywhere and you could have chosen a lesser known one that would have made it a little more exciting. I'm going to go with CBN. I think the CBN with helping others sleep is actually the route that I think will be implemented quicker into society's daily intake. I think with the amount of people, and I don't have the statistic offhand, that struggle from sleeping disorders, especially the older generation, and if you add in all the anxiety and all the stress levels of the various endless problems going on in today's brains, I think people are going to need something to help turn it off. And I, I, I wonder if CBN specifically is that thing that they can put into their tea at the end of the night or put into their bath or their, their face mask and help them just get a good night's sleep. Yeah, I mean, I'm, <laughs> I just, I've done a lot of research on CBN and unfortunately there's like zero evidence to back that claim up. And it's frustrating because like I hear that claim all over the place and it's kind of what's wrong with the industry right is that yeah. people take these like random anecdotal claims and run with them from a marketing perspective and next thing you know you have a product that makes you sleep better makes you grow an inch every day and you can now lift a mountain right so like it's really close to going down those those rabbit holes and it's just challenging because there is zero scientific support behind cbn i mean there's like very very little primary literature out there it's never really been synthesized i mean for goodness sake there's people that say you can that the plant makes it and that's just complete malarkey you know what i mean and like i have spent years doing that kind of stuff to to try to verify some of the claims out there regarding cbn and it's just all malarkey right and so <laughs> it's challenging Let me ask you this question right i know a lot of people that Easy. literally i know a lot of people that just consume regular cannabis Right. And then if they don't consume regular cannabis, they can't sleep. So there's an sure. insane amount of correlation between just the THC molecule and sleep. Sure. And you're probably not going to like this, but I'm going to give you a real life example. My mom used to tell my sister that if she ate carrots, she'd have pretty hair. And guess what? My sister ate carrots every single damn day because all she cared about was her hair. So at the end of the day, whether it's accurate or not, if she does it and it helps her, that's all that matters. So it's a fact. I agree with you. So, I mean, it's super hard science in me. It's a hard science in me. Yeah, for sure, for sure. But that, those are the differences. At the end of the day, placebo effect versus true science. We'll probably debate this till the end of time. And it, right, it's, everyone. It, it's frustrating because the placebo effect probably works better. <laughs> probably, <laughs> but that's, that's it literally nice. does. It's the power okay. of the mind, man. Thanks for everyone for joining the week of May fourteenth. We'll see you next week.